There was a time in this country when, you know, people went outside and, and they realized the air isn't as clean as it used to be. Water isn't drinkable everywhere. People used to be choking. People used to be getting sick and dying from the pollution in the cities back then. We had a problem with acid rain. The ozone layer was depleting because of chlorofluorocarbons. The bald eagle was threatened by the rampant use of DDT, a pesticide to thin the shells of eagles. Rivers that seemed to burn in the middle of the day because of the discharges children with mercury poison. Those were all consequences of an unregulated free-for-all. There was basically a broad public movement to clean it up. America sat down in the 1970s, they went out on the streets in Earth Day in record numbers, and they said, we need to fix this, and thus the EPA was born. The time has come for man to make his peace with nature. We must act, and act decisively. We have passed new laws to protect the environment, but there is much yet to be done. When it passed in 1970, there was one vote in all of the House and the Senate against the Clean Air Act. The Clean Air Act and EPA standards set under that law has been uh, successful in cutting dozens of examples of pollutants by as much as 80%. The American people breathe easier. It could be better, but they breathe easier. We'd be dealing with a very uh, dire situation in this country uh, if we didn't have these laws uh, and if we didn't continue to support them. It's been such a long ride with these protections that the good thing is that we're used to them. The bad thing is that we take them for granted. What we've seen over the last uh, several years is a concerted effort to attack our foundational environmental laws. I think our opposition in the fossil fuel industry wants to tell Americans that they need to pick between a good economy and a clean environment. A good economy and a stable climate. A good economy and clean water, clean air. From 1970 till now, the economy grew three times. It's three times larger than it was then. And yet the air pollution level has been cut 80% or more for most of these pollutants. As we've seen, the economy has grown dramatically since the time we put these laws in place. We can reduce pollution and grow our economy, there's no question about it. What we've seen with uh, setting environmental standards is we actually raise uh, not only the, the public health and welfare of our country, but we also create new industries. People hired uh, as engineers, people hired as construction workers, people hired as machinists. The public doesn't buy the argument that this is uh, gonna hurt jobs. We have power plants that are over 50 years old. If we have these rules that say, hey, you got to clean up and modernize, we're creating a modern economy. This is a good time to be investing in clean technology. It puts people to work. It puts money to work that's sitting idly and will help us get the economy moving again. Trying to suggest that the, the EPA uh, is a, a burden on our government spending uh, is, is really misplaced. I mean, it takes a minor part uh, of our federal budget. You could eliminate the EPA and the budget deficit would have the same number of zeros. EPA is a small amount of money in the grand scheme of things and it's mostly going towards enforcement. It's going towards watchdogs. We've protected our parks, our streams, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and we get tremendous gains. Two trillion dollars worth of health benefits every year because of the Clean Air Act. It's crazy that it's become political. I think that if you ask an everyday American, they say, yes, everyone deserves clean air, clean water. I think that this is what we believe as a country. The environment never used to be a political issue. The Republican Party has aligned itself with the corporate sector and with uh, protecting the interests of polluters. I think Republicans are, are pawns in the grand scheme of things here. Uh, many Democrats are as well. Since Citizens United, we've seen record profits from the fossil fuel industry and also record amounts of campaign cash coming into the coffers of politicians who then go to Washington and say, let's gut the EPA. The fossil fuel industry can put a few million dollars into a few elections and get billions in returns and subsidies, billions of dollars worth of loopholes. It's really this ideology of profit for a few, 
over protection for many. This is the cynical part that, I, that bothers me the most, my friend, is that this is collateral damage for the good of the industry and for the good of the economy, which is false, collateral damage. Some people might get sick. EPA is essential. As much as it is its environmental protection, it is also a public health issue of immense consequences for this nation. In my own hometown of uh, Tucson, Arizona, we had a TCE discharges that affected 80,000 people. Cancer rates spiked. The Air Force and a big defense contract industry, they went the easy route and threw it into the sewer. And I think that the theory was, these are poor neighborhoods, these are working class neighborhoods, these are neighborhoods of, co of color. Uh, they're not gonna have the political wherewithal to push back. Uh, they did. As we're going to places we've never been before to extract these fossil fuels, uh, you know, we need to think twice so we don't go into those places and create situations like the deep water horizon that can cause, frankly, environmental catastrophe. I think fracking is a great example of a major hole in, in our current regulatory structure. Fracking is very deep, deep drilling for natural gas. But in the process, you have contaminated water and you have people who are very deeply affected in certain local areas and no one's standing up for them yet. Right now, there may not be a more important issue than reducing carbon pollution from power plants, factories, and cars, other sources, uh, and the EPA is just starting to tackle uh, those emissions. We've seen in the last couple winters, the last few summers, record temperatures, record snowfalls, record precipitation, record drought, record wildfire. This is more than just uh, polar bears and a few uh, susceptible habitats. This is a matter of survival for entire communities, for entire cultures, for entire nations. Everyone deserves clean air, everyone deserves clean water, everyone deserves a safe climate. I think that this is what we believe as a country. This is why we have an environmental protection agency, because the economy grows and companies will not police themselves. If polluter interests had their way, what we may see is short-term profits by a few. We're going to see a dramatic increase in health problems, frankly, in this country. We've had the luxury of a generation, a generation and a half, growing up and living in a much cleaner environment than it was. We worked hard to get these laws. They've been good for us, and we need to protect them and move forward. We need people in the streets. We need people standing up for what they believe in. The voice of millions uh, can overcome uh, the polluter dollars of a few.